The Bristol Centre for Functional Nanomaterials, or BCFN, has two aims. Firstly, we want to train the future leaders in interdisciplinary nanoscience and nanomaterials. And secondly, we pioneer new research across the full spectrum of functional and advanced materials. In terms of size, at the moment we number more than 100 academics from 15 different departments of the University of Bristol and we have more than 60 students in training. The BCFN is based in the University of Bristol's Centre for Nanoscience and Quantum Information, which combines dedicated teaching space for our students with world-leading laboratory space where we have some of the quietest nanoscience laboratories in the world. The general themes of research at the BCFN span the full spectrum of materials from hard to soft, polymers, liquid crystals, metal oxides, superconducting materials, carbon-based materials, and we also have a very strong thread of characterization and developing new tools for characterizing materials. Here in uh, Bristol Centre for Functional Nanomaterials, we are conducting research on development of uh, functional nanomaterials for applications in energy, particular fuel cells technology. We are uh, conducting not only uh, development of new methods for making materials, but also analyzing their physical and chemical properties. Our ultimate goal is to understand the correlation between the structure and properties of uh, nanomaterials and use that knowledge to target design new catalysts for future fuel cell technology. My research involves the control of superconductors, in particular the way the crystals grow. Uh, a few years ago I managed to discover a way to do this at the nanoscale and so the research that my students at the BCFN are involved with is extending this work and producing superconductors that work at higher critical current densities. In the future we hope to raise perhaps the most important parameter of a superconductor which is the temperature at which they operate, the so-called transition temperature. At the moment it's around about 90 to 100 Kelvin, but we're looking to obviously raise this as high as we can, um, and the ultimate goal is to get this, these things to work at room temperature. I look at how plants interact with all sorts of factors such as light and temperature. So I'm able to work with optical physicists, with material scientists, with chemists, all of these people bring different ideas, different techniques, a different perspectives to any one problem. So I work on iridescence and I'm still working out why plants in particular might produce this. I'm getting such a range of different ideas and feedback from this range of people. My research is at the interface between life sciences and physics and I'm specialised in imaging in cellular material and I'm trying to visualise things that no one has seen before at the boundary between quantum physics and classical physics. So I've visualized femtosecond pulses as they propagate through photonic structures and unpredicted we found that actually the light stops as it propagates through those structures and that is kind of a fascinating discovery if you would want to make optical memories. As a chemist my research focuses on making soft functional nanomaterials. So there's a specific class of conducting organic materials that we focus on and we use these for a wide variety of applications, including energy storage and battery applications, supercapacitors, as well as sensing, for instance, for biosensors and gas sensors. So being involved in the Bristol Centre of Functional Nanomaterials makes it possible, enables me to really do new research with colleagues from physics. So their expertise in the field of AFM and SDM enables us to really see and understand how our materials organise themselves at the nanoscale. Training is critical to everything we do in BCFN. The whole ethos of the first year and indeed the whole life cycle of the PhD is to actually provide skills for the students that they can take through their PhD and use in order to be able to get the type of job that they want at the end of it. Now this might be communication skills, it might be entrepreneurial skills, it might simply be how to manage a time, manage a research project. Ultimately what we hope to do is to offer all of these skills together as a package so that students get the most out of the PhD experience. My research field is nanomedicine. 
So I make colloids of poorly soluble drugs that wouldn't otherwise be able to be formulated any other way. That is to say that I take a drug that can't be dissolved into water, I turn it into small particles which can then be dispersed into a solution which could then be injected or ingested by someone. The hope is that we can take otherwise unusable drugs and demonstrate activity when they're synthesised as nanoparticles and this could have very large implications for making the next generation of antibiotics. The special thing about BCFN that I think puts us as students in a really strong position when we finish is that we have learned to communicate within lots of different disciplines, within chemistry, within physics, within biology, everyone's got their own little um, terms and how they express things and how they think about things and because we've been exposed to all these different disciplines we've just learned how to consolidate all of them. For me within the BCFN the, the potential to explore your own ideas and maybe make links with other students and come up with new projects was really what was um, so appealing about it and really what I find made me uh, learn how to be a scientist. The future for the Bristol Centre for functional nanomaterials is extremely exciting. Our combination of world-class training for the students and the research that we do here mean that we're ideally placed for exciting partnerships both in industry and also with our partner institutes around the world.